Welcome to the Star of Grind. Customers. So to my previous point, product only works if you're disciplined about your customers. Okay, and this is where I actually think there's some support for the, the adage that it's not just about the best technology. Because getting back to, threading back to the previous point on, on product, it's how well does that really excite the customer so that customer then ends up wanting to share it with everybody else. Um, and, and I think a disciplined business is actually going to go through the process where everyone's thinking about the customer every day. You know, one of my favorite companies, I guess, is, is it SAS out of North Carolina? It's like the CEO says, it's very simple. You do two things, well, you'll have a successful business. One, listen to your employees, and two, listen to your customers. Do what they tell you to do. And you think, well, gee, you know, there's so many amazing things that they don't understand, and I got to think about these things two generations in front of them. I can remember I was demoing FrameMaker. I used to work at a company called Frame. It's now part of Adobe, and I was at a sh trade show. And I was demoing FrameMaker, and we had this awesome structured um, technical publishing platform where everything was tagged. And this was before we all started using HTML, which most people know came from SGML. Charles Goldfarb, you know, the guy doesn't live too far from here, father of SGML. And so we'd, we'd taken upon that task to build a structured um, word processor, and it was extremely powerful. And so I'm sitting there demoing the product to this um, WordPerfect user. And the WordPerfect user goes, can you show me the codes? And I go, well, what are you talking about? And I guess there's this feature in WordPerfect where you can reveal the codes, and it could show you all of the tags behind the document, so you can edit the tag directly. And my point was, well, gee, with a WYSIWYG word processor, why would you ever want to do that? Just you know, pick up the picture and move it over here. And he goes, no, can you please reveal the codes? And <laughs> rather than just saying, you know, you're stupid, you shouldn't have done that, he actually was right. Because if we'd revealed the codes, then there was this whole new dimension that was available for the product for people to edit the tag structure versus kind of what we were displaying was the structure. We never understood that because we were too smart. And the, and the customer was, wasn't, wasn't as smart as we were. So you've got you to be careful with that arrogance thing. Now, if you get the formula right in, in the iPhone market and you really do empower your customers, they can become your chief marketing officer, which ends up being fantastic when you look at things from cost of customer acquisition. How expensive is it for you to go off and acquire a bunch of customers? So our T-Pain product's been a top 50 ranked product for a year and a half. Well, people say, well, geez, you got a great relationship with Apple. And we do, but only because we're helping them sell phones. And so how often has Apple featured our product in their store, if you guys are familiar with this? Well, T-Pain, I think two or three times. So that's two weeks out of 70. What about the other 68 weeks? And the other 68 weeks, what's going on is all of our users are creating content, and they're pushing it onto YouTube, and they're pushing it onto Facebook, and they're pushing it onto Twitter. And so here's an example, again, of, of what one of our users has done um, with some of that content. And uh, it's a little vulgar. I'm warning you in advance. Oh, oh. let's go back here. Just 
So you got the idea. They're awesome. Cu uh, couple F-bombs, one or two. Apologies for those that find that offensive. Um, but think about the creativity that's out there and everybody that isn't in our company. And can we get the conditions right and give them a little nudge? And if so, customer acquisition cost, right? So if you add up the aggregate number of YouTube views across our customer base of generated videos, it's, it's, a, it's a big number. And what is our cost to host that video? Zero. What is our cost to produce that video? Zero. <clears throat> Yet, I can document a direct correlation between YouTube views and product sales. All right. Customers. Empower your customers. 